Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a Call of Duty title screen in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Eric Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. In today's episode, Super cool if you're a Call of Duty fan. Even if you're not, you're gonna learn some great stuff. We're gonna show you how to take a Call of Duty image. It's basically an image of a soldier. We're gonna recrop it and change the format of the image. Then we're gonna bring in some custom text and actually show you how to create the Call of Duty font from scratch. Then we're gonna take a texture and load it over top of the words, giving it a really cool scratched appearance. And to finish today's episode, we're gonna be using the spatter filter, which is gonna give the font a really cool kind of rough, rustic edge. We got a ton to cover, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is load up a couple images in Photoshop. So I went ahead and opened, we've got an image of a soldier, and then I've got two textured images, like really cool scratched metal, and uh, we're just gonna put them all together. So let's go ahead and zoom out on here. We're gonna use our move tool, and I'm gonna just shift, click, and drag from one image over to another. There we go, and we've got our textures there. Let's go ahead and group those together. So I'm gonna click on both of them, hit Control or Command G, group them together, and we'll just double click and call this textures. There we go. Now we're gonna make this invisible for now. We don't really need it. All right, let's go ahead and close out these other documents and full screen this by hitting F. Okay, now this looks pretty good. We've already got our, our basic image. This is, you wanna find a badass looking image of a soldier, right? If you're gonna create a Call of Duty um, title screen like we're doing. But I do wanna change the cropping because I, I want the text to be in like a, an area that's all black and I don't really like the, I, I don't really like putting text over top of a subject, especially when there's a lot of detail. So we're gonna use our crop tool. So I'm gonna hit C for the crop tool and then we're gonna click, make sure this is not checked by the way, this delete crop pixels check button, you wanna make sure that's not checked or else it's gonna get rid of all the information in your image. Well, that's outside of the crop anyway. <laughs> okay, let's bring the right side in here and then we're gonna bring the bottom up just a little bit as well. And then we're gonna bring the left hand side out just a little bit. Yeah, you know what? We can give it a little bit more room on the bottom. All right, there we go. Cool, that looks pretty great. So let's go ahead and hit that checkbox. Now we've got a lot of area here on the left with nothing in it, but thankfully this image fades to black, right? So if I wanna put some black on the background, it's very easy to do. All I have to do is create an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna click here on my adjustment layers. We're gonna go down to solid color. So let's go to solid color. We're gonna go all the way down here to black, hit okay, and there we go. Now all we need to do is click and drag this down below our subject and we're good to go. Now the reason I like using solid color layers is if I decide to crop this again, let's say I decide to pull the crop out again, I've got this space that's basically just transparent space. But as soon as I enter my crop, my solid color layer is going to automatically fill that space in. So I prefer to use a solid color fill layers rather than just creating a new layer and filling it with black. All right, now there's a little bit of an edge here. Sometimes you're gonna see this. Let's just create a levels adjustment layer to see what kind of edge we're looking at between there we go. You can see that now a lot easier with that levels adjustment layer on, right? Um, it is going all funky on me. There we go. Let's go ahead and close that down. So you can see between our image and the solid black background. Not hard to fix. Just click on your image here. We're gonna click on our layer mask button and then I'm gonna use a gradient tool. We're gonna use a linear, linear gradient. We're gonna use a foreground to transparent and I've got my foreground color set to black and I'm just gonna hold down shift and click and drag from the left to the right. There we go. And that's gonna make sure we have a really nice fade so we don't have that little line there. All right, cool. So our background's prepared. We're ready to get into our typefaces. So for our type, we're actually using a custom Call of Duty font that I just typed in Google Call of Duty font and uh, I think Da Font came up. And you're gonna be able to find fonts for just about whatever you want. And Da Font is a, it's a free font website, which is really, really nice. So we're gonna create a, I'm gonna hit T for the text tool. We're gonna go out a window and then down here to character. So I wanna choose our font. We've got Call of Ops Duty Regular. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and click over here and I'm gonna type in call. All right, we're just gonna start off with one word and get it looking how we want. So I need to change our color here of the, of the text. So we're gonna click here. We're gonna change this to white so I can actually see what we're doing. We're gonna take our tracking now, and this is the space in between the letters. You can see as I bring that up, it's getting more and more space. 
I'm going to bring this back to zero. So it's uh, zero is going to be the default or the, um, the, the standard tracking between space, between letters. All right, and let's go ahead and bring up our size quite a bit. All right, there we go. So we have call. Now the next thing we're going to do, let's hit command J, which is going to duplicate this because I, I wanted a new layer here. So we've got call and then call copy. Let's double click there. We're going to call this duty. There we go. And then the reason I'm duplicating is because call and then of and then duty are all going to be separate layers because of in the middle is going to be a separate size. It's going to be a different size. So now let's duplicate the duty sign. And um, I just said it called duty in my pants. <laughs> Look at it. Just click there and hit of. There we go. Now we want to make this a lot smaller. And so we're just going to bring this down in size and then we can go ahead and place it. There we go. And then we'll bring our duty to the left. Now, if you need to move things to the left or the right and you, you want to make sure that they stay even, just hold down the shift key and this is going to only allow me go to the left or the right. Or if I go up and down, it'll allow me to go up and down as well. So if I'm bringing this to the left, it's a good idea to hold that shift key down. Or you can just use the up and down and left and right arrows on your keyboard. OK, that looks really good. So we've got Call of Duty. And then the last thing I want to do, let's just go ahead and duplicate that of. We're going to bring it straight down. There we go. We're going to make sure, let's just call this uh, Special Ops or something. This is a, a, a new franchise that has not, it has not dropped yet. All right, we're going to change this tracking between these letters. Uh, let's go to something like 400. And this is a really great technique when you need to kind of have something space out really nice and wide. So you know what, 500 looks pretty good too. And we're going to lower our size. So it's at 48 now. Let's just change that to 40. OK. And I do want this to be centered. You can see it's off to the left. So if you want to center, I want to center Special Ops with the entire title of Call of Duty. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift click Call of Duty. We're going to hit Command G to group those together, OK? Which now means they're going to act as one. Then I can hold down Command and click on the both of Special Ops and Call of Duty, click on my Move tool, and then I can use my Center Align. So I'm going to click on there, and you can see because Call of Duty is now acting as one because it's in a group, Special Ops will align it to the center of that group. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and bring it up. And yeah, that looks really, really good. So now everything's in the right place. So we're going to go ahead and move Special Ops into the group and give it a name. So Special Ops, let's go ahead and drag that down here into the group. And we'll just click on there and say COD for Call of Duty. All right. That looks great. Now it's time to add textures onto the Call of Duty type. And because this is kind of like a war type game, we want to get something that's a little bit gritty, maybe some scratch metal. So I need to figure out how to get, see, I've got Call of Duty here in a group, and then I've got these textures in another group, but I need to figure out a way, I only want these textures to be visible where my Call of Duty is. Now, here's something really cool. It's called a clipping mask. Now I'm just going to go ahead and make this invisible for now, show you how clipping masks work. If I had a new layer, and I were to paint a solid color on my new layer, just like that. And then I'm going to create another layer right above that. And we'll just paint with a different color here. There we go. Now let's say I want this green to only be visible where this beige is visible. Just like we only want the texture to be visible where the type is. All you have to do is right click here and go to create clipping mask. And then the green is only visible where the texture is. You don't have to use actual layer masks. So you don't have to make selections or anything. You just use what's called a clipping mask. So if you have Photoshop CS6 or newer, you can actually use a regular layer as a clipping mask on a group, which is very, very cool. And it totally sounds like I'm speaking a different language here. But when I show you, it's going to make a lot of sense. OK, so let's go ahead and open up our textures. Now we're going to bring this guy back out of our group. So this right now, this entire texture is outside of our group. So we're moving it around, and it's on its own layer. Now, I can right click here on this layer itself. And because it's above our Call of Duty group, we can go to Create Clipping Mask. And now, what's really, really cool, check that out, is it's clipping this layer to this entire group. So I can move this group around. Like if I decided to use my Move tool and move the group around, you can see my texture is staying in the same place. Or I can move my texture around, and the group is staying in the same place as well. So it's a really, really useful way 
to get your visibility on one layer to be defined by where another layer is, or another group in this case. All right, let's go ahead and bring this layer out too. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring that down. You know what? We can go ahead and delete our textures group. We don't need it. And I'm going to right click on this and go to create clipping mask as well. All right, so we've got a couple of different options here. We've got, let's just scale that down a little bit. This is like the, the metal, kind of like scratched metal here. And then let's hit Command T on this other texture. And we scale this down as well. All right, that looks cool. Now, I do want it to look a little bit more contrasty. I want the text to be more, more white. You see how light it is? So on this layer itself, the actual texture layer, we're going to hit Control or Command L, which brings up our levels. And I'm going to bring my white point a little bit wider. OK, there we go. And our black point a little bit darker. There we go. And now we're starting to get some of that like really nice, gritty looking texture right there. And we can still move it around if we want to. All right, I think that looks pretty cool. Or we can use this one. Let's hit Command L. I'm going to bring our white point up. There we go. And bring our dark point up as well to give it that like cool scratched look. So what we're going to do is create a new layer on top of everything. And using a spatter filter, I can't do this on a blank layer. So I need to create what's called a stamp visible layer, which is just a duplicate copy of everything you see. So I'm going to hit Shift, Option, Command, E, which is going to make this stamp visible layer. And you can see on the layer itself, the little preview, it's everything that's combined with the image. And if I were to move it around, you can see it is a layer that contains everything you see, which is perfect for filters. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in. Now we're ready for our filter. So we're going to go to Filter. We're going to go down here to Filter Gallery. There we go. It's going to fill our entire screen up. Let's go ahead and zoom out on our preview so we can see what we're doing. OK, and here under, you'll see a lot of options, Artistic. Here we're going to choose under Brush Strokes, we're going to choose Spatter. And you can see it's already created an effect there. Let's just zoom that in a little bit more so we can see exactly what we're talking about here. There we go. Now, you can change any of these settings. You can change your spray radius to be lower, which is going to change the actual amount of, spa of uh, spatter effect here. Or you can go higher, which is going to give you a little bit more of an effect. You can see, give it a little bit more of that grunge. I think somewhere right in the middle is good. You don't want it to look like, you know, too Photoshop-y, too you know, look like it has some effect on it. But a little bit of a rough edge kind of gives it a little bit more of an authentic feel. I really recommend playing around in the filter gallery. There are so many cool filters that you can use on your image that are going to give slightly different effects. So in today's episode, we're using the spatter filter. But for your own purposes, you might find a different filter works for you. So let's go ahead and hit OK. There we go. And let's just zoom in. And we can see the before and the after. So there's the before. You can see it totally just looked like a font that's you know very smooth. And here in the after, you can see it, it definitely looks a lot more custom. And it looks like it actually matches the tone of the image. Now, because this is on a stamp visible layer, it did the same thing to our person, right? There's the before and the after. So what we want to do is just create a layer mask right around this area. So we're going to grab our marquee tool, make a selection right around that area, and then click on the layer mask. So this is the only area that's visible now. The rest of the photo we can see is not affected by the spatter filter, just the logo. And there we have it, a really cool Call of Duty title screen. Let's take a look at the final image. And that's it for today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, today we focused on Call of Duty, but we learned a lot of really great principles that you can use on just about any photo or any time you're working with type. We showed you how to use the crop tool to change the composition of your image, and then how to create a solid color adjustment layer to fill the background with black. Then we showed you how to use the type tool, where we created different layers for each of the parts of the logo because we wanted them to be different sizes. And we showed you how to adjust the tracking on the special ops part of the logo so it had wider spacing between all the letters. We added a couple textures onto the type using a clipping mask, and then we used the levels adjustment layers to up the contrast. Then to finish it all off, we used the spatter filter to change how smooth the edge was around our type. If you love Photoshop and photography just like I do, you're going to love Flurm.com and our YouTube channel. And you can subscribe by clicking on your screen now. It's just easy. You just take your hand with the mouse on it and just go to that button and click on it. <laughs> That's all you got to do. And we'll send you free Photoshop and photography videos every 
single week. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. We'll learn you later. Bye bye I have two heads. This is my other head. It's prettier than my first one. It's not as smart, though. <laughs> and then you can change your smoothness as well. So I work... I I recommend, I really recommend playing around in this battle filter. I highly recommend it. And then to finish it all off, we use, and then to finish it all off, ugh, all right, <laughs> it's rough. And then to finish it all off, we use this spatter technique. <laughs> bye-bye, bye-bye now, goodbye, bye-bye, goodbye. Remember Genie in the Lamp? Keep your hands and arms inside the carpet at all times. Goodbye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>